Happy New Year, everyone. If you're new here, my name is Mike, and welcome to the CO Pilot channel. It's been cold, windy, and snowy here in Colorado, with a recent polar vortex affecting most of the continental U.S. and causing well below freezing and negative temperatures across the country. I thought it'd be a good time to discuss aircraft preheating, the ways, the whys, and the what's that are currently working for me. With that, let's get right into it. Advantages of preheating are simple, reliable starts in the cold, reduced premature engine wear and internal damage, and less warm-up and run-up time required, saving you fuel and time. While I'm fortunate to keep my Cessna 182 inside of a hangar and out of the elements, the hangar itself is uninsulated, unheated, and basically becomes a big ice chest during the winter months. That's where I'm currently sitting and freezing to prove a point. I learned pretty quickly owning this old bird that she does not like cold starts. I've experienced a couple hard starts early on. At the time I didn't have access to a heater of any kind and I cringe thinking about the potential wear these cold starts can have. With a cold soaked engine, the oil is very thick, uh, won't be able to reach vital engine components until warm sufficiently. In addition, the different materials that make up the engine expand and contract at different rates causing additional friction between these engine components. According to the legendary maintenance expert, Mike Bush, maybe you've heard of him, it is said that starting a cold soaked engine can cause as much piston wear as 500 hours of flight time. Now that is terrifying. Now from the manufacturer, this Continental Service information letter dated January 28, 2003 states, preheating is required whenever the engine is exposed to temperatures at or below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, seven degrees centigrade, and that includes the wind chill factor, for a period of two hours or more. In addition, this letter warns of attempted starts with partially discharged battery and the potential damage to starters and associated components, clogged ports and lines caused by congealed oil and issues arising from over priming. Remember, Avgas doesn't vaporize well at lower temps compared to auto gasoline, which furthers the difficulty starting in these conditions. So what are our options for preheating an airplane? The best, easiest, and most thorough option put the airplane in a heated hangar. The benefit of this is a heated hangar will provide the most uniform and consistent temperature across the entire airframe. Engine, avionics, interior, and so on gradually increase and maintain a comfortable temperature. Easy, right? Throw it in a heated hangar. While many do enjoy this luxury, it's definitely not an option for me at my home field, though many FBOs do have space available to rent overnight or even allow you to park inside for a few hours to warm up before a flight usually for a fee, of course. The next option is forced air heat. These come in many different forms from industrial and commercial grade combustion heat carts to electric heaters with blowers attached and some very creative homemade solutions in between. Many FBOs and flight schools have these available and they're relatively common among owners. The downside to forced heat air is that it doesn't heat the engine components evenly. And certain heaters, you run the risk of overheating certain non-metallic components, such as seals, hoses, and so on. Another blurb from this Continental Service Information Letter states that proper procedures require thorough application of preheat to all parts of the engine, apply preheated air directly to the oil sump, oil filter, external oil lines, oil cooler, coolant radiator, and cylinder assemblies. Continue to apply heat for a minimum of 30 minutes. And it goes on to warn because excessively hot air can damage non-metallic components such as seals, hoses, and dry belts do not attempt to hasten the preheat process. Now another option is a pre-installed preheat system. Again, these come in multiple forms but include components like electric heat strip bands around individual cylinders, heating pads that are often adhered to the crankcase and oil sump pans, and heating elements that are installed inside the cylinder themselves. While these electronic heating elements are not a quick solution, after a few hours they do a much better job of even heating without the risk of damaging components. One thing to note here that Continental warns against, do not leave engine mounted preheater systems on for more than 24 hours prior to flight. Continuous operation of the engine mounted preheater system may result in aggressive corrosive attack internal to the engine. My understanding of this is the small amount of moisture in the oil that accumulates during normal combustion process will evaporate from the oil and with nowhere to escape, the moisture will condense inside the crankcase, cylinder walls, and so on, which can lead to corrosion. 
This is why many recommend the top-down heating method over simply using a heat pad on the oil sump. Top-down heating is basically heating the cylinder heads and allowing that heat to penetrate downward through conduction. Now, that being said, a few hours of oil pan preheat, then running the engine at operating temp will evaporate the moisture, expel through the running engine, and shouldn't cause any issues. Now, if you're leaving your heaters on constantly or for days or weeks in between flights, you should definitely rethink your preheat protocols, as this may lead to severe corrosion. Now, for my setup, I use a small combination of each. During my annual inspection last year, we installed an Easy Heat oil pan heater. This electric heating pad is installed with a thin layer of high temp silicone and placed directly to the oil sump pan. You then route the 120 volt power cord someplace convenient for access. I ran mine inside the panel for my oil dipstick. These easy heat pads advertise power consumption at 300 watts or less. They're thermostatically controlled and they claim the thermostat will keep your oil temperature between 120 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And Three to five hours is recommended to fully preheat a cold soaked engine. It is also said that this is the safer method of preheating as there is no combustion or glowing heat elements greatly reducing potential fire hazards. Now, one downside to this is obviously you need access to 120 volt power. The easy heater for my Continental 0470 cost me around $190. In addition to the oil pan heater, I picked up a Twin Hornet 22 series heater this year as well. This is a pretty slick little device and comes with a nice storage case. These are intrinsically safe heaters certified for use in areas containing combustible gases. They're waterproof and again, thermostatically controlled. It'll shut itself off at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This heater features two fans and two independent heating modules that increase the reliability of the module along with a hermetically sealed explosion proof thermostat. I won't even pretend to know what that means, but it sounds like a pretty nice selling point. And this too runs on 120 volt power with a power consumption of around 100 to 250 watts. Unlike the permanently installed oil sump heater, this has a 40 foot long power cord. You plug it in and then simply place the heater inside the cowling on top of the engine crankcase. I then choose to install a cow plug and throw a blanket over the top to help retain some of the heat. There are a number of commercially available and homemade cowling covers and blankets that work great to insulate the engine during the storage and preheat operations. Even draping a heavy moving blanket over the cowling helps greatly. Now, this Twin Hornet provides that top-down heating concept for more consistent, uniform heating. This unit cost me right around $330. I'll generally turn this on the day or night before I plan to fly, and then I'll turn the oil sump heater on a few hours prior to getting to the hangar. Again, call it a con, but this is not a quick solution, and obviously you need a power source for this heater. Now you might be asking, how do I turn these on without running to and from the hangar all the time? And I'm glad you asked. The real trick part of this entire setup is this switch on 4G LTE remote power switch. This little magic box allows you to control two, four, and even up to six channels remotely over a cellular signal through their app. It has a built-in temperature sensor, available analog sensor inputs, and not only that, but you can customize on-off schedules by time, temperature, and date, it's all monitored and controlled by the box. I chose to add the optional remote antenna with magnetic base and ran it to the roof of the hangar just to ensure adequate signal strength through the hangar walls. You simply plug this thing in, download the app, scan a QR code, and you're ready to go. It's well over an hour and a half drive round trip from my house to the hangar. Having total control over my preheat system from anywhere saves me time, energy, equipment life, and it eliminates the issues associated with prolonged preheat on the engine. This remote power switch was an absolute must have for me and it works great. This particular unit cost me about $250. The first year service is free and then around $50 a year for continued service beyond that. Pretty inexpensive and well worth the cost. I can tell you between these two methods of preheating, my engine has never been happier. Cold starting is no longer an issue. My engine will generally fire on the second blade immediately runs nice and smooth and no more idling for 20 minutes plus wasting time and fuel trying to get oil temp to rise for a run up. This entire setup that I can control remotely from a warm and comfy location all in costs less than a thousand dollars which in aviation speak is pretty reasonable and if one cold start can potentially cause the same wear as 500 hours of normal operation for me this setup is a great investment and money well spent. 
I pretty much use this all the time at this point, even outside the winter months. I'll leave links to all these products in the video description down below. So what do you use to preheat your airplane? I'm genuinely curious uh, as to what you creative pilot types have come up with. Let me know in the comments below. All right, one last thing real quick before I sign off. I'd just like to give credit where it's due and share a story with you guys. One of the first things I purchased after bringing my 182 home was a set of vent plugs for the various air intakes on the wings, fuselage, and cowling. I was recently contacted by Ray with Affordable Aviation from whom I purchased these plugs. Ray and I had never actually spoken, but he happened to watch one of my videos and noticed that the ropes attaching the plugs were too short. They were pulling too tight against the actual plugs. So Ray wrote and mailed me a letter reaching out wanting to send me a new set at no charge. Guys, this is so refreshing to come across business owners in this day and age that truly stand behind their products and put the customer first. And beyond that, the fact that my silly little YouTube channel in its infancy with me clueless at the helm, actually gaining some small reach within the aviation community is pretty cool. So with that, my sincerest thanks go out to Ray. Be sure to check out what he has to offer over at affordable-aviation.com, knowing you will truly receive a customer first experience. On the topic of preheating, Ray actually just released a set of cowl inlet plugs specifically for heat ducts. Pretty neat. With that guys, happy new year. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.